exception handling can be more useful than just providing a way of displaying messages. It also gives you the ability to attempt to recover from the condition that caused the error. Now, here is the CDD base project, which I first looked at back in chapter six, and this has some exception handling built in. So when I attempt to load a specific record, the record number is entered in this field, and this button attempts then to load that record. Now here I've set up a Boolean called invalid number. Booleans, as you know, can be true or false. I've set it to false originally, the assumption being that the number that's going to be entered is going to be valid. But of course it might not be. Somebody might enter something that can't be converted to an integer. So I put the call to str to int inside a try section of my exception handling code. This attempts to convert the string entered into the edit box as the text into an integer, which will be assigned to the recnum variable. But of course, in some cases, that might not work. So let me just try it out. So let me enter something that can never work. And it shows me x is not a valid integer. So that message is produced here on the eConvert error section of my exception handler. And I've explained that in the previous video. But a consequence of trying to convert the string to an integer when it can't be converted is that my recnum variable now has an uncertain value. And maybe I need to use that later on. Maybe I need to display it, or maybe I need to do some sort of calculation with it. So it's wise when you have some value that has been assigned in the try section, when an exception occurs, to give it some unambiguous value. So that's what I've done here. I've just set recnum equals zero. Then I've displayed the message. And finally, I've set my Boolean variable invalid number to true. So the next section down here lets me test this variable. If invalid number is true, then I skip this whole chunk of code which attempts to read data from my file. That's because at that point I know that an exception has occurred and invalid number was set to true in the exception handler. Only if invalid number is false, that is the value that I gave it before my exception handling code executed, then I know that the number is valid and it's safe to attempt to get the record from the file. So that's a simple example of how to use an exception handling block to set variable values, either the variable value that has been assigned some uncertain value as a result of the action in the try block, or else in this case, some variable that holds a flag that can be examined. This is a Boolean value in this case that can be examined by code later on, which can determine whether or not an error occurred.